So I'm back home now after being at Cullen Heath for the weekend. Uh, we had two clear skies there, which is very good. And we've got another clear sky at home tonight. And uh, I'm gonna have another go with the uh, tracked Milky Way. So um, fingers crossed it'll all work. So um, hopefully it will stay clear all night long. Oh, and the observatory is gonna be going as well. And that is on, I'll have to check that out and let you know. Anyway, um, <laughs> right, so fingers crossed, it'll stay clear and we'll have another good night. Right, so we've had a windy the last few days and it's a clear sky tonight. So I have to remember to take my bolts off. Put these um, bolts here, which I always put on whenever we have strong winds forecast. So I'm to remember to take them off before I try to open the roof, which I have actually done once before and it didn't go well. Right, there we go. So they're all off. Now this is uh, ready as soon as it's dark and get this roof rolled off and get imaging. Right, so this scope is now part of aligned and I'm just gonna set up the sequence using the um, iPad here connected to the ASIR. And that rig is part of aligned. I've just got to do a focus and then I can get that going. So I'm just gonna quickly get this set up. Right, so what I'm gonna do is go on to the drive where the last image was stored. Go to image management, auto run, light, just call one up and then hit go to. So that's now going to go to that target. And uh, then I'll start my guiding calibration going. I'll run a quick water focus and then I can get started. So any minute now, the observatory roof should open. And it's going to make me jump like it always does. Because I always forget it's about to go and uh, I'm normally standing next to it. It starts moving and uh, of course I jump out of my skin but um, there we go, so uh, let this find this target and I'll move on to the next step. It's turned quite cold now, so um, I think uh, it's going to be very clear tonight. It's going to be a good night. Right, target is centered. Right, that's the area that I'm imaging. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go to guiding, calibration, start that off. Right, here we go. We'll leave that for a while. calibration is complete now let's go into auto run set up sequence so this is going to run oh what's the time now let's just check uh quarter past eight okay let's go five minutes so this 12 to an hour i'm going to go with 75 subs as soon as i hit confirm it will go into an auto focus there we go as soon as that's finished focusing it will start imaging Right, so that's done. Now let's get this one focused. And I do need to put the light out for this. Okay, so I've now got my power pack attached to the tripod leg. And that's powering this dew strap. And found on the other side is my intervalometer strapped to the other leg. And the tracker has been powered by this Polaroid power pack. And uh, we're all set, ready to go. So let me just press start on this. All right, here we go, let's count them down and we're off. We have started engine. Tonight I'm back in the garden, we have another clear sky and I've got three rigs running. 
got the observatory running and uh, the HEQ5 with the SCAR 400 is going and I've got the OG Star Tracker running again tonight. This time I've uh, probably pushed it slightly to the limit. I've got the Altair Astro ED60 quad with my DSLR and that actually weighs just over 4kg and I think the limit is 4 so um, it, it really is right on the edge so I've managed to uh, find Andromeda it took me an hour but I'm there now and uh, I'm taking one minute subs didn't want to push it any more than a minute because uh, it is struggling just a little bit it's just just over the limit I think but anyway we'll see uh, what happens I'm going to try and get at least an hour on this and hopefully uh, there'll be an image at the end. Unfortunately, I did push the OG Star Tracker a little bit too far, trying to use it with the uh, Altair 60ED quad. Um, I had the battery grip on my DSLR as well, and that just put the weight a little bit over the top. It was around 4.4 kg, I think, and the max payload is only four. So um, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna reduce the weight by um, probably try and a different scope on there a smaller scope and i should take the battery grip off and just have one battery in the camera so that will reduce the weight i'll try and get it down to about 4 kg and see how that goes so that will be in the next video unfortunately the image um i took it didn't come out so um i'm not even going to bother showing it to you so i'm going to keep playing around with it i, I really like it i'm going to keep using it and try and get the best image out of it that i can Right, so with this rig beside me here, I have acquired 72 hours of data, which is the most data I've ever acquired. Um, however, I've not got 72 hours that I can use. Unfortunately, uh, there was a lot of bad subs there and I've been quite brutal in my um, filtering out the uh, bad subs. So uh, I've actually deleted 20 hours. So um, I've still got a respectable 52 hours and I'm really pleased with the quality that I've managed to pull out with that amount of data. So um, talking about lots of data, if you want to see an image with lots of data, then I highly recommend that you go and check out Logan from Logan's Astro. He's recently put out an image of 267 hours. And that's just crazy. I mean, I don't know how long it would take me to get that amount of data, if ever. But um, I highly recommend you go and check it out. If you haven't seen it, I'm sure you'll be able to find that image on his Astrobin channel, but it's definitely worth going to check it out. So you're well done, Logan, for that. That image was fantastic. Anyway, the image I have got, I'm really pleased with, and uh, the target is the Crescent Nebula, and the data is HA and O3, and I've edited it in the uh, HOO palette. So I really hope you like the image and uh, I'm going to say thanks for watching, thanks to all of my subscribers and uh, as always I wish you all clear skies.